No. All right. Okay. Coming out of the heart, we have a big artery, and that's the aorta. Now, it's got three parts. It's got the ascending, which is just the part that goes up. And off of that, you can't see it, but it's the right and left coronary arteries, right? We talked about those. So that goes up, and then it arches at the top. Off of the arch of the aorta, we have three blood vessels that come off in order. The first one is the brachiocephalic. It's one of the few arteries that doesn't have a right and left. It's just the one. And it, it leans to the right, and it's going to become the right common carotid and the right subclavian. So it'll feed the right side of the head, neck, face, brain, and the entire right upper extremity. So it's a big one. It's a big one. The second one off of this arch is the left common carotid. And it goes up and feeds the left side of the head, neck, face, and brain. It's called common, so it's gonna split again. There's an internal carotid that goes just to the brain and an external carotid, the one that we can see here, that goes to the outside and, and feeds everything out here. The stuff in the throat, uh, the skin and the scalp and the bones out here. Okay. The third branch off of this arch is called the left subclavian because it goes under the clavicle and feeds the entire upper extremity. So unfortunately, the tube changes names depending on where it is. So way up here, it's the subclavian and maybe down to about here. Then it continues on and when it's in this armpit region, it's called the axillary, because axillary means armpit. And then later on down this arm, right, across from the humerus, this is called the brachial artery, because that's the brachial region. When it gets near the elbow, it splits. And so this would be the brachial artery, and then this would be the radial artery on the thumb side and the ulnar artery on this side. And then there's a lot of blood vessels in the palm. Okay? The head, the only one that you can see on this plaque is the uh, external carotid. There is an internal carotid. And this is the vertebral because it also goes up into the head. Um, after the arch, then the aorta turns and goes down. So sometimes they call this the descending aorta. Sometimes they name it for the region. So if it's above the diaphragm, it's called the thoracic. If it's below the diaphragm, it's called the abdominal. Um, up here, here's the lungs. So these blood vessels, the blue ones, if you follow them back, that's what you should do. Anytime they ask you about a blood vessel or a nerve, kind of follow it back or follow it and see where it goes because that'll give you a lot of information. So this blue vessel comes right from here. And so this is a pulmonary artery. Now that's weird because it's blue, right? But the pulmonary vessels are the wrong color. Because this guy's carrying deoxygenated blood, it's going away from the heart, so it's definitely an artery, but it's going to the lungs, so it's carrying deoxygenated blood. And the red vessel, is a pulmonary vein, it's red, that doesn't make any sense, but they're backwards, right? So it's got oxygenated blood from the lungs, it's going back to the heart into the left atria here. Okay, all right. Then it continues down and is gonna feed the rest of the body. So down here in the abdominal region, we have this first little spider webby part, that's called the celiac trunk, and it's going to split into a bunch of blood vessels. The main organs that it goes to are the stomach, which isn't shown, the liver, and the spleen. So this is the hepatic artery, because that means liver. This is the splenic artery, because that means spleen. This second nub off of the front, which is fairly big, is called the superior mesenteric. It's going to do all of the small intestine and half of the large. So it's gonna do the ascending and half of the transverse colon. And then this little guy off of the front does the rest of the large intestine. So it's gonna do the rest of the transverse, the descending, the sigmoid, and the rectum and anus. Now some of the, this organ here, this is a kidney. And so the blood vessel that's red, I don't know why they're not showing a blue one, but they're not. The blood vessel that's red is 
a renal artery. Renal means kidney. There should be renal veins there too, but they're not showing them. Okay, so the aorta continues down. Eventually it splits, and so this is the left common iliac. And that means it's going to split again. So actually up here it's called the left common iliac. When it splits, it splits into the internal iliac, which feeds the deep abdominal pelvic region, and the external iliac, which is going to go down the extremity. As soon as it passes outside of the hip, this is the hip mole, as soon as it goes past there, now it changes names. Here it's called the femoral, because it's right across from the femur. When it gets behind the knee, it's called the popliteal or popliteal, which makes sense. And in this case, when it goes down and splits, it's not named for both of the bones in the lower extremity. It's only named for the tibia. So this is the anterior tibial artery, and this is the posterior tibial artery. So that's a little weird. The veins are very, very similar. The big differences are the superficial veins. This one that goes from the medial ankle all the way up to God's country is the great saphenous, sometimes called the long saphenous. This little thing, which actually empties behind the knee as well, is called the small saphenous or the lesser saphenous. But this is obviously the more important one, the great saphenous. And this is the spare parts for a bypass. In the upper extremity, we also have some uh, superficial veins. This one on the little finger side, <laughs> is called the basilic vein, and this one on the more lateral thumb side is called the cephalic vein. Okay, and then they empty into the, this is the subclavian. It would be axillary down here, but it's subclavian up here, and the subclavian joins the uh, external jugular to form the right brachiocephalic vein. This is the left brachiocephalic vein. So remember with the arteries, we just had one brachiocephalic artery, but we have two brachiocephalic veins. This one's not very big. It's just where these two come together. And then where the two brachiocephalic veins come together, this is the superior vena cava and it goes into the right atrium. Right? Good. And then this is the inferior vena cava coming up goes under the heart and enters into the right atrium at the bottom. Veins are pretty similar, so this would be the right, and up here it would be right common iliac, down here it would be right external iliac. Right? They join together and that's how you form the inferior vena cava. And these, they just show this these nubs coming from the kidneys, this is the renal veins, but they really do go all the way into the organ. We don't have a, a celiac, a superior mesenteric, and an inferior mesenteric vein at all because those veins for the digestive organs instead go into the liver first and they chose not to show that. We'll talk about it in lecture, but it's more complicated than I guess this poster wanted to show. Okay? I think that's it. Cool. Thank you. That's right.